After Dovey's victory in Qatar in 2019, four competing factories filed protests against the aerodynamic device attached to the swing arm of his Ducati. The factories claimed that the device was producing downforce, which would make it illegal under FIM regulations. Not all factories filed protests, because they already knew how the device worked. Nevertheless, to not face any penalties, Ducati was forced to reveal their secrets on what the device does. It turns out that the swing arm spoiler helps to lower the temperature of the rear tire by as much as 7 degrees Celsius or 44.6 Fahrenheit, which is quite significant when racing on the limit, especially for a motorcycle which focuses on power and top speed. Speaking of swing arms, a really fascinating part of how they work is how they flex at large lean angles. When the swing arm flexes, it absorbs bumps, which helps to control the tire's temperature by reducing how much it deforms. This provides more grip and better handling. The downside with too much flex in the swing arm is that it does not provide a lot of feedback to the rider, so some riders prefer a stiffer swing arm in order to have a better feel for rear tire grip. Teams also develop specific swing arms for different tracks, varying how much they flex and the wheelbase dependent on the conditions of the tracks. A track with many fast corners may require a longer wheelbase to maintain stability, while the rider may prefer more feedback and thus a long, very stiff swing arm would be used. Being able to accelerate as hard as possible when exiting corners is a crucial part of winning races. To achieve maximum acceleration you want a motorcycle with a low center of gravity. This is because the ratio between the height of the center of gravity and the horizontal distance from the center of gravity to the center of the rear wheel affects how hard a motorcycle can and accelerate before starting to wheelie. So if you have 0.6 meters between the center of the rear wheel and COG, and the COG is 0.6 meters above ground, the motorcycle would start to wheelie at 1G. But if we lower the motorcycle so that the COG is 0.55 meters above ground, we would be able to accelerate at 1.09G. However, a lower central gravity reduces the ground clearance and the amount of available suspension travel, and it also makes the bike harder to turn in. Therefore, MotoGP motorcycles have a COG height that is balanced between straight line acceleration, ground clearance, and so forth. But what if it would be possible to change the COG height just for when it's needed, such as when starting, exiting corners, or braking hard? This is what Ducati and their riders have figured out. By enabling the riders to lower the rear suspension for corner exits, they can accelerate faster without having the bike wheelie. This is also what they use at the start of races, which commentators refer to as using a whole shot device. Some factories have opted to lower the front instead of the rear, which has a similar effect in the start, but is not so useful when exiting corners. Another important aspect in making MotoGP bikes accelerate as hard as possible as well as maintaining stability is to control rear tire spin. You see, modern MotoGP bikes have so much horsepower that the rear tire spins on all gears. To deal with this, factories have developed seamless shift gearboxes. So in a traditional gearbox, you have to stop the movement of the transmission of the engine when shifting gears. This pause and sudden re-engagement causes more wheel spin and makes the bike rock back and forth. The Disengagement also stops the anti-squat effect due to the chain pulling on the axle at an angle. A seamless gearbox has a mechanism that enables two gears to be selected at the same time, but only one of them transfers power to the rear wheel, so it engages the next gear ratio while the previous ratio is still driving, going up and down in gears in about 0.01 seconds. Acceleration is a crucial part of lowering lap times, but we shouldn't forget about braking. Modern MotoGP bikes can reach such extreme speeds that steel discs start over overheating and deforming when the rider applied the brakes over and over again. This is why the factories use carbon brake discs instead. Carbon brake discs have a much higher optimum operating temperature than steel discs, and thus are highly consistent at race pace. They also weigh less than steel discs, reducing the amount of unsprung and rotating mass, making the suspension's job easier and the bike easier to turn in. Remember to subscribe to my channel, there is always something to learn. It's gotta be against the lot of look